tonight's Got Questions Get Answers. A viewer asks, how can a convicted DWI offender convince a judge that taxpayers should pay for the ignition interlock in his car when he's driving a $65,000 SUV? That question had us wondering. So we sent investigative reporter Jeremy Hohola to dig for some answers. What he found is abuse in the state's indigent interlock fund. Convicted of drunk driving? The law requires you get an interlock if you want to drive. But some people say they can't afford the punishment and get the state to pay part of the cost. But not everyone is telling the truth, and you end up paying for their lie. Every year, about 9,000 New Mexicans convicted of drunk driving get ignition interlocks. Most pay the required cost, up to $100 to install it, up to $100 a month to rent it, and then another $100 to have it removed. They also have to pay another $100 that goes into the state's indigent interlock fund, a fund created by lawmakers to help low-income folks have part of their interlock cost covered. You also pay into the fund when you buy alcohol. About $300,000 a year from state alcohol taxes is put into the fund. About one out of three people with interlocks use the fund, claiming they can't afford it, and get up to more than half their interlock costs covered. That's about 3,000 people a year, but we found some may be lying. We dug through records of nearly 3,000 cars that had indigent interlocks installed. Dozens are suspicious. 2008 model SUVs and trucks like Nissan Titans, Chevy Avalanches, Toyota Tundras, and Ford F-250s. We found Cadillac Escalades, 2009 motorcycles like Harley Davidsons and Kawasaki's, and even a 2009 BMW. We couldn't track these people down because driver information is private. So how do they claim they're low income? The law says judges and probation officers determine who needs the fund. Under oath in a courtroom, convicts tell a judge they can't afford it. Often judges take people at their word or assume because they have a public defender, they are indigent. So clearly there are some people who are getting by with utilizing the indigent fund who could really afford to install the interlock themselves. Dr. Dick Roth of the group Impact DWI, who helped push for the fund, says relying on judges in the courts to gauge who's indigent clearly allows convicts to lie and abuse the system. He says in the long run, that's not the best way to gauge who needs the fund. The fund had a surplus up until this year, and but that surplus is rapidly being uh, eroded by because so many people are uh, qualifying under our present standards. He believes the state should designate one person to oversee applicants by checking their tax forms and check stubs. We think the indigent fund is important and we, we think it supports our goal, which is to make our roads safer. Tim Halford, an interlock provider and vice president of the Interlock Association, says the fund no doubt saves lives and helps those who really need it. But he says he's seen abuse firsthand. We just have somebody walk in the door with a court order that tells us we have to put this on the on the on the motorcycle or the the car, and we do. Um, but but uh, we also have been known to call probation officers and courts and say, hey. Um, this guy's driving a new car, and this I don't know that he's indigent. And I do know in times there, there's been a response where he people have been removed from the indigency because of our call. Linda Atkinson of the DWI Resource Center calls what we found absurd and says there needs to be more oversight. So the clever people that are breaking the law by drinking and driving are breaking the law again by lying about their economic status. As for the State Department of Transportation, the agency responsible for managing the fund, spokesperson Mark Slimp says it would take an act of the legislature to change how people are determined to be indigent. Some of them appear to be quite suspect. Escalades, BMWs, brand new Harley Davidson motorcycles. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts don't really count, but I'm sure that there probably are some that would seem suspicious at first glance, although no one really knows what a person's actual financial status is. So what's the answer? The state admits the law has allowed a lot of people to claim their low income and calls itself a victim of interlock success. But as long as convicts are allowed to lie to judges who take their word, the fund will be abused at your expense. On a side note, it's even contributing to another problem. 
The people who manage the fund are so swamped with paperwork, it often takes months for interlock businesses to be reimbursed. Some companies are owed more than 100 grand by the state. Back to you.